POV, everyone's moving to Denver, so you move to Denver. Well, let's rewind for a minute. Welcome back to our Millennial Living series. For those of you who are just joining us, my name is Katherine and my boyfriend Parker and I have been digital nomads for the past year and a half. While we've been traveling around the country trying to find the perfect city for us to move to, we've noticed some trends among Gen Zs and Millennials. The kids these days seem to be flocking to certain cities like Austin, Texas, Portland, Oregon, and Denver, Colorado. Denver is the capital of Colorado and dates back to the Old West era. The Mile High City is in the midst of a growth spurt as it was recently named the sixth fastest growing city in the country. Denver is also a jumping off point for ski resorts in the nearby Rocky Mountains. Millennials and Gen Zs have been contributing to the city's rapid growth. Millennials make up about 33% of Denver's population, so about one in three people you see out and about in the city is probably between the ages of 26 and 41. Just from speaking to young professionals, many are drawn to access to nature, affordability, culture, and promising job prospects. Last month, we lived in Portland, Oregon, and determined the city checks off those four boxes. Will Denver be worth the hype as well? Let's find out. We've looked everywhere, so you don't have to. Let's start exploring Denver, Colorado. After spending one month here in the winter, we decided to come back this summer to further examine the city, as we are strongly considering it as a place to permanently move to. Let's take a look at some statistics to cultivate a well-rounded view of the city before we delve into our experiences and hot takes. First up, let's talk about housing. Citywide, the median rent currently stands at $1,400 for a one-bedroom apartment and about $1,700 for a two-bedroom. The Denver housing market is very competitive. On average, homes sell within 20 days of being on the market with a median listing price of $595,000. Recent data shows that out of the top 50 metros in the US, Denver is the seventh most expensive city to live in. So Denver is more expensive than Portland, but less expensive than cities like LA and New York. So take that as you will. Next up, let's have a conversation about transportation and infrastructure. After living here in the winter and the summer, we can attest that you definitely need a car to live here. In order to access natural attractions and even run basic errands, the city is not very walkable and quite sprawled out. Although the city's RTD rail system operates 365 days a year, it didn't seem very efficient to get to all the places you really need to go. In August, the city lets commuters ride for free to incentivize less car use due to poor air quality. One thing I found surprising about living here is that Denver is the seventh most polluted city for ozone pollution. Next up, jobs. While Denver's cost of living has been increasing in recent years, the economy continues to add tens of thousands of jobs annually. Major industry sectors include aerospace, broadcast and telecommunications, healthcare and wellness, financial services, energy, and IT software. Finally, let's touch on Denver's culture. The city's culture may be described as City Mountain West, which merges elements of the outdoors, urban excitement, and Western independence. Now that we have a better understanding of what Denver is like on paper, let's put the city to the test and live out a Denver lifestyle. Earlier this year, Parker and I stayed in Denver for a month in the winter. We loved the city while it was covered in snow, plus we had a blast skiing several times. For our warm weather stay in Colorado, we want to experience the outdoors, visit other towns and cities across the state, such as Aspen and Boulder, and take part in fun, popular things to do, like mountain biking or infiltrating one of their major fan bases. Denver has several pro sports teams, including football, hockey, basketball, and baseball. Let's check out a Rockies game. We are walking almost a mile and a half to Rhino right now. We took the light rail. It is 95 degrees right now. We are sweating a lot, but gonna go get a beer, head to the Rockies game. As a side note, Denver is a pioneer of the craft beer scene. We really enjoyed our mutual friend brewery, which we also went to in the winter. 
Coors Brewing Company is based in Golden, and the logo on the can depicts Wilson Peak. Located in Colorado, Coors beer definitely hits different at a Rockies game. We made it to Rocky Stadium. It is pretty epic. Well, what's the better word to say? Big. It's huge. And it's really cool to see the mountains behind us. It's the fourth largest stadium in MLB, about 50,100 seats. Impressive. What's the third largest? Yankees? Yankees, and then it goes Dodgers, and then Oakland A's, which Oakland A's aren't selling out, so. Can we say that? I don't care. That's funny. <laughs> in Colorado spirit, we got Coors Banquet, which you cannot get on the East Coast. Oh, it's harder to find. It's harder to find. Probably could get it somewhere. It's pretty good. And our mutual friend was fun. We got a prickly pear sour and an IPA. And now we are about an hour early to the game, but we wanted to make it in time for happy hour and to get dinner. We're probably gonna go to Smashburger for dinner. Also behind us, you can see a really cool view of the skyline. You can see a view of the skyline. It's not, you know, totally visible, but you can see enough. But good day so far. Good way to start off our trip in Colorado. That was fun. Colorado sports teams are definitely worth the hype. Let's pivot from the city for a minute and check out some of the scenic small towns and cities that make up colorful Colorado. First stop, Breckenridge. On a Saturday, we drove to Breck for the afternoon and grabbed a very fine lunch in town. When I say fine, I mean it was overpriced and very fine. There was a little arts festival going on and then we got caught in the pouring rain. Now we're waiting under shelter for a minute. It's for like 20 minutes. So it's for 20 minutes? Yeah. Fun. After that, we saw these fuzzy guys. Like Leah and Morgan fast forward through this part. We grabbed a coffee from Mountain View Coffee Roasters. It's really good. It's sweet tasting. After coffee, we went for a free tram ride up the mountain, which is a little misleading because you have to pay for parking, which is expensive. was cute. Now let's check out Vail. My friend Anna, who is a Kiwi living in Australia, came to visit for a week and we took her out to the Swiss Lake mountain town. But first, we had to make a stop to Good Bread, Denver's best bakery. Look at these stunning pastries. Flaky, crunchy, delectable. These videos definitely do not smell as good as their shop. Be sure to check it out. Shout out to my friend Erica for the recommendation. So Parker, Anna, and I are in Vail for the day. We are having a nice little walk around town. We got coffee from Yeti Coffee, and now we're just exploring the town. This is Anna's first time in Colorado. She's from New Zealand, and we're gonna go at lunch, and then we're gonna go to a cute little place called Bread Bar for cocktails after. I didn't know that. <laughs> you didn't know wedge salad? Anna ordered the wedge salad and they gave her a little a it's literal wedge. Really ha, it's a half wedge of lettuce. <laughs> Parker got a burger. Is it good? Yeah. And I got a, a wrap, but it's a salad which I'm fine with. We just had a nice overpriced lunch at Red Lion. <laughs> and now we are gonna go drone at a park, get some cute views of Vail, and then go to Bread Bar. And here's Anna, she's back. Hello, he's so cute with his name.
through Vail, we stopped by Bread Bar, another Erica recommendation. Bread Bar is a fine mountainside drinking establishment at the heart of the Continental Divide. Housed at the site of an 1800s era bakery, Bread Bar honors its rich history and the Silver Plume community as a whole. Bread bar. You can see that cute little building right there. It was very fun. We had a cocktail now on our way to go home. Don't tell my mom. <laughs> <laughs> on our way to go home and get ready and then go to dinner. All for the vibes. How's, Good vibes only. How's Colorado? From a New Colorado Zealand. Colorado is fantastic and warm and sunny, and I am living my best life. We like to hear. <laughs> Okay, so now we've been to Breckenvale. Let's check out Aspen. Aspen is about a three hour drive from Denver. I loved this cute mountain town. Besides Boulder, this may be my favorite place in Colorado. It's a ski resort town and year round destination for outdoor recreation, also known for high end restaurants and boutiques. Definitely more bougie than Vail and Denver by a landslide. When Parker and I visited, we just walked around, checked out the cute farmer's market, and had lunch. We were supposed to hike the Maroon Bells, but our plans were derailed, so next time that will be on our list. Finally, let's go to Boulder. While we were living in Denver, we went to Boulder about once or twice a week. I honestly preferred Boulder to Denver, which I will talk about in a future video where we will be breaking down our rankings of all the cities we've lived in and giving our hot takes. Boulder is at the foothills of the Flatirons. The college town is a perfect balance of urban and outdoors. It is known for its stellar food scene, breweries, walkable downtown, and tons of outdoor activities. Just 30 minutes northwest of Denver, Boulder is where the Rocky Mountains meet the plains. For city activities, I highly recommend checking out the farmer's market, exploring some coffee shops, and doing a bit of shopping. For nature activities, on the other hand, it is a must to hike around the Flatirons or go mountain biking. Parker and his friend Patrick shredded the trails and got super muddy while doing so. While they mountain biked, I met up with my friends Brianna and Drew and went for a rainy hike in the Flatirons. At the Flatirons right now, and it's in Boulder. I'm sweaty and rainy and all that. <laughs> but it's nice out, it's a beautiful day. Before we concluded our stay in the Rockies, we were invited over to our friends Erica and Nick's house. Erica has a stunning garden where she grows fresh vegetables and herbs. Basically, she has a personal farmer's market in her backyard. They also have the best dog ever. This is Duke. I miss him. He's so funny and cute. When we hung out with them, we made homemade pizza with garden veggies and just had a really good time. Erica has made us maybe one of the best pizzas, probably one of the best pizzas I've ever had. This is, what is this again? It's a fig balsamic drizzle, but the pizza is garlic cream sauce with zucchini from my garden and squash blossoms from my garden and prosciutto from Costco. <laughs> Finally, for our last excursion in Colorado, we are going to Mount Evans Scenic Byway. This morning, Parker and I came to Mount Evans and we are driving on the Scenic Byway. It's about a 45 minute drive and it feels
feels like we're in Switzerland. I think this is called the Switzerland of America. We've seen really cute animals so far, including these little guys called marmots and then deer. We're really hoping we see some mountain goats because they live here. And we came here, I think we got into the park around 8 a.m. This is the highest auto road in North America, which is really cool. And these views are epic. It feels like we're in Switzerland, even though we've never been to Switzerland. It just feels like that. personal records maybe I'll show our parents. Parker no, just sure. Parker just ran over a marmot. You're fine. You can't say that. Why? Because I don't want to like have National Forest Service come after me. <laughs> Okay, don't worry, the marmot was fine. Everything worked out. He was a little stunned because he darted into the road the same time Parker was driving. There's nothing we could have done to prevent that excursion, but no PETA violations here. He lived, everything's good. And that wraps up our time in Colorado. Denver is a fantastic medium-sized city to live in, especially if you're a nature junkie, love outdoor sports, and appreciate a slower pace of life. There's really something for everyone here. After spending almost three months here, we realized that we're homesick for the East Coast. We booked a flight to New York City and we will be spending the rest of the fall and winter there. Stay tuned for a video when we're live from New York. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Before you go, I want to share some clips I have from Erica's garden. She is a wealth of knowledge when it comes to horticulture and all things gardening, so I will leave that here. Plus, hit her up on Instagram. She's also an interior designer and she has excellent taste. Have you eaten them yet? Yeah, they're really, they're kind of taste like arugula. You can put them on salads or... They're pretty. Do you ever just snack on them? Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna try one. Flower? <laughs> yeah. You, what makes a flower edible versus not edible? It doesn't have toxic enzymes. Oh, interesting. So I can just eat those? Yeah, Parker's gonna be a more graceful eater than me. Wow, you have a mosquito biting you on your forehead. Uh, what does it taste like? It's spicy. Yeah, it's like, it's like wasabi. To it's me. pretty good. It's good, wow. I don't wow. know if I need a whole flower right <laughs> now. You can just throw it around. <laughs> um, these are my tomatoes. Summer. That's smaller as you go from right to left. Huge. Wow. You're supposed to stick with the season. So like if I planted kale in the spring, this is spring kale mm. and it should be taken out now. And then I should plant fall kale. It can be the same variety, but it's just when you plant it. You can see here's a baby one. Lemon cucumber, yeah. Oh, wow. <sighs> wow, Erica the harvester. <laughs> so the reason that these oh, it are smells not so good. Straight carrots are not one piece, and they have pants or like arms or legs is because, wow. unbeknownst to me, when I planted these. Carrots shoot one root down, and if it hits anything, they produce offshoots. And if it doesn't hit anything, it keeps going straight. Mm -hmm. And so I put the beds on top of the soil, on top of the grass, and then you put logs. Like I was going on Facebook and finding free firewood and just uh -huh. putting that to fill it up. And then you, once that's up to a good point, you fill the rest with soil because soil is really expensive especially if it's like organic compost which is what I bought. So I shouldn't have planted carrots in a spot where it could hit firewood basically mm. and they did. They're so good they just like aren't as pretty. They're cute. So